go to work, read your Bible, feed the kids, clean the house, exercise, attend PTO meetings, serve at church, support your spouse. Feeling swamped? This edition of Inside Lifeway is for you. Welcome to Inside Lifeway, the official news podcast of Lifeway Christian Resources. I'm your host, Brooklyn Knoll. The epidemic of busyness seems to infect a growing number of Christians every day. A recent survey revealed that 60% of believers allow the busyness of life to hinder the development of their relationship with God. That maybe isn't as surprising a statistic when you consider that more than 50% of Christians say they are usually exhausted at the end of the day. It seems busyness is a problem many people struggle with, and LifeWay recently released a study designed to help. The study is called Freedom from Busyness, Biblical Help for Overloaded People. And author, Mike Zigarelli, is visiting the Inside LifeWay studio today to discuss the resource. Mike is a husband, a father of four young children, a professor, a magazine editor, an author, a small business owner, a sought-after expert on management and ethics, and, until recently, a university dean. Clearly, he is also an authority on busyness and its many facets. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for joining me today. Privilege to be here, Brooklyn. Thanks very much. Well, let's just jump right in and start with, since we're talking about busyness, the obvious question is, with your extensive list of commitments, where in the world did you find time to write a study? Well, I made the time, actually. Uh, priorities are what we do. You know, and if um, I wanted to write this book or I believe God wanted me to write this book, I just had to move things around in my life so that I'd have the time to do that. And admittedly, I wrote most of it between 4.30 and 6.30 in the morning. Goodness. So I, I guess uh, one of the things that became a, a lower priority was sleep. But um, when you have four young kids, sleep becomes sort of irrelevant. You, <laughs> you learn that you can live on less sleep anyway. So uh, I just continued in that. Now, I said until recently you were a university dean. When you wrote the study, you were a dean. Um, the study had something to do with the change, I assume? Well, a, a little bit. One of the things I learned in writing Freedom from Busyness and in, in um, just trying to hear from God on this topic of, of overload and overextension is that uh, I needed to not just be writing about this stuff, I needed to be living it. I needed mm -hmm. to be living a simpler life. I needed to be focusing on the priorities of, of God and, and family before work. And um, with, with all the things going on in my life, you know, there, there, was, just, there was just too much happening. And um, to simplify, I needed to step off the fast track. You know, I, I, I think I was on the road to becoming a university president, and um, wow. as as nice as that would have been, and it would have been great to be in a position of influence like that, uh, I think that too many other things were being compromised, and so I, I took my own advice, and I stepped off of that fast track, and I took a cut in pay, and I went back to kind of the good life of a university professor, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's really quite wonderful. So no regrets? Not one. Not, not a single regret. I mean, it's a little harder to pay the bills. So, um, you know, ask me at the end of the month again. But uh, for the most part, where it matters most, there's not a single regret. Wow. Well, uh, along those lines, then, what is the purpose of this Freedom from Busyness study? What do you hope people walk away understanding? Well, I guess mostly that uh, a lot of our, our busyness and overload and overextension is a choice. Um, not everybody chooses a busy lifestyle. Sometimes it just happens to them. You know, you have a couple of young kids and, you know, you're, you're a stay-at-home mom and you got a million things to do and, or you're, you're a career mom and you're trying to do the, these two things at the same time. And there are some seasons of life that we're not choosing the busyness, you know, it, it's just sort of choosing us. But mm -hmm. m most people that I've met that are, that are overextended, mm -hmm. they're, it's it's by choice whether they realize it or not. They're they're selecting too many activities for for their kids to do or for themselves to do. They're selecting too many hours of work. They're choosing a kind of job that requires way too much of them. And if if they wanted to be less busy, if they wanted their life to be less stressed and more relaxed and, and more simple, it could be. They might have to adjust a few things. They may have to to take a new job. They may have to buy fewer things. They may have to move to a a smaller house in a different area of town or whatever. But if overextension is really undermining your your relationships with, with your spouse, with your kids, with your parents, with the people who matter most, and if it's undermining your relationship with God, well, you need to do something about it. You need to take some major surgery in your life 
And um, that may require doing some things that seem, seem radical. And um, that's that, one of the things I'd like them to take away is the ability to look honestly at their life and whether they've actually chosen a lifestyle of overextension. You've mentioned a couple of times priorities. Is that really what busyness is all about, is organizing your priorities? To, to some extent, it is. I, th I think that um, sometimes we're busy not just because we've, we have things misaligned, mm -hmm. but because we derive so much of our, our self-worth from accomplishments. That's one uh. of the reasons people work too much, for example. That's one of the reasons you know, women try to be, be super mom is because a lot of their self-worth comes from just being known as, as the super mom or having mm -hmm. that kind of, of image. So um, there's more to it than just selecting the product. It runs deeper than that. Well, then how is your study designed to help people understand that and really get a grip on their lives and their busyness? First of all, it's designed to be easy to do if you're busy. Right. It's kind of weird writing a, a book for busy people because the target market doesn't have time to, to read the book. Mm -hmm. So we've we've made the um, the daily studies really short. You can do it in, in under 10 minutes most okay. of the time. And also we've uh, structured it so that if you don't have time to read, you can just listen to the CD that comes along with, with the member book. Yeah, so a lot of folks um, who, who write me or call me, they, they tell me, you know, I, I just stick in the CD on the way to work. Mm -hmm. And that's when I have time to, to think about these things. So we've tried to be sensitive to the audience in, in creating the product. Well, that just makes sense. What are some of the key topics you've addressed in the book um, in terms of, of how to get people? Now, are you really trying to walk them through, you are busy, this is how to become not as busy? Or are you trying to get them to understand, I guess, really what busyness is all about and how to avoid it to begin with? I like them to, first of all, audit their life and see if busyness is really a problem. Most mm -hmm. of them already know that it is, and that's why they're doing the study. But sure. once we get past that, then it's uh, a, a question of why are you so busy? Are, you know, why are you so hurried? Why is your, your life so frenetic? And here are some, some sort of biblical pathways out of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you know, here's here's the, the whole issue of, of simplicity and, and how uh, embracing a simpler lifestyle is a um, sort of counterbalance or an antidote, if you will, mm -hmm. to, to that lifestyle. We don't think about simplicity being a virtue. We don't think about it being a spiritual discipline. We don't think about it being a good way to live most of the time. You know, a lot of folks like to be busy and they like sure. to accomplish a lot. And, you know, that's what real success is to them mm -hmm. until they get to a point in life where they realize they've, they've climbed this ladder and it's, it's leaning against the wrong building or something, right? Wow. So um, I think that uh, identifying simplicity as, as a Christian virtue and as a potential antidote a uh, biblically-based antidote to busyness is something that some folks are going to find helpful. Are people any busier today than they were, say, a couple decades ago? In the United States, they are, for sure. Mm -hmm. the, um, there are all kinds of studies done on this. And um, recently, the International Labor Organization, which is um, kind of a, an arm of the United Nations, they did a study on how many hours people work across all these industrialized countries. And the United States came out on top. We work about 2,000 hours a year mm -hmm. as compared to, um, oh, in, in Great Britain and in Brazil, they work mm -hmm. 250 fewer hours per year than we do. That, that's more than, than five weeks fewer than, than we do. In, in Germany, they work 500 fewer hours than we do, mm -hmm. right? So, which is like 12, 13 weeks fewer mm -hmm. than uh, in the United States. And so certainly relatively speaking, we're, uh, we're working a lot more than, than other countries. Mm -hmm. But even compared to ourselves, a decade ago, two decades ago, the trend is to to work more hours. So, uh, yeah, I think we're we're busier for the, for those who work for pay. They're they're clearly doing more. And also, even even uh, stay at home moms, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's more of a more pressure to get your kids in more activities and have them do more things and keep up with the Joneses. And you know, as my neighbors have their kids in more activities, well, I need to do the same kinds of things. And so there's this escalating pressure to always be on the run. And it's just totally exhausting. So technology hasn't made our lives a whole lot simpler then. In, in a lot of ways, it's made it worse. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of technology. I use sure. it all the time. And uh, we're, we're using it right now. And it's wonderful to get the message out this right. way. But at the same time, I don't think it's made our lives a whole lot simpler. And what do you think is the number one mistake people make when it comes to effectively really organizing their obligations in life? 
well, it'd be easy to say uh, we, we just we're too disorganized. You know, we need to organize our, our life better. We need to organize our time better. We need to organize our house better. And um, if, if we did that, we'd be more efficient. But, you know, we have so many things to manage these days that we become uh, become disorganized. And mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's sort of a, an easy answer. But I think, again, the um, the the deeper problem is this notion of um, of our self-worth being tied to our accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And um, because of that, you know, we're, we're, we're overloaded. We're doing too many things. It's, it's where we derive value and, and who we are and how, how great we are. It comes from being busy and overextended and, and from accomplishing things. So uh, that would potentially be the number one problem is mm-hmm. just having wrong perspective on what is success. What does the Bible say about busyness? Just if you can encapsulate it um, easily. It's hard to encapsulate easily. I mean, it's, it's all over Scripture. But if you just look at biblical role models, you look at the life of Jesus, for example. How busy was he? Not, he did a lot of walking. He, he did a lot of walking, <laughs> you know, and uh, he ha- always had time for people. And um, it, it it seems as you, you look closely at his life, and we do that in the Freedom from Busyness study. We, yes. use, we use Jesus as, as a model, and we have other models in there, too. Mm-hmm. He, um, you know, he did embrace a simple lifestyle that allowed him to have adequate time to be with his father. That allowed him adequate time to to be with his friends, mm-hmm. to teach people, to do the things that God really cares about. To build the relationships that God had called him to build. Exactly. What kind of feedback have you received on your the busyness study so far? I know you said some people listen to it in the car. They've told you that it's convenient for them. But what else are you hearing? Well, I've not received a lot of feedback. I guess people are too busy to, to give me <laughs> feedback. But um, it, the, the Lifeway folks tell me that uh, it's been very positive feedback, that, um, that folks are not only using it, but it's actually making a difference in their life. They're actually seeing things they hadn't seen before, and they're, they're trying to put this busyness plan in place. In the, in the product itself, mm-hmm. we, we walk people through a, um, a way to overcome their busyness by, by planning that through, through each of the studies. And they're finding that tool to be somewhat helpful as well. How do you recommend people use your study? I mean, is it something you'd use on an individual basis or more of a class setting? It's designed to be a small group study. But okay. I, I guess if I had to answer that in, in one word, I'd, I'd say that they should use the study devotionally. To, to make this a, a sacred activity, to really mm. seek God through this study, not just to treat it as a, as a pragmatic kind of thing where, all right, I have this time management problem, how can I overcome it? It's, it's really about structuring your life, reordering your life around God and around God things. And so if they co-labor with God throughout the study, I think they're more likely to, to achieve real success with it than if they just try to treat it like another thing to do on their to-do list. So with everything that you've got going on in your life, I'm assuming you've also got something else in the works. Um, you're in Nashville today uh, from South Carolina, I believe. So what, what brings you here? What are you working on next? I'm working on a, um, a project called, well, it's tentatively entitled Influencing Like Jesus. It's about how we can be more persuasive, how we can be more effective agents of change in, in every area of our life, whether it's speaking into the lives of our, our children or being salt and light to our spouse or in in the workplace being a change agent there or whether it's living out the, the great commission or you know with your students if you're a teacher or you know with with a jury if you're a lawyer whatever context you find yourself in if um if you want to be more of an influencer if you believe god wants you to be more a more effective change agent well, that's what this product is designed to do, is mm-hmm. to show you how to be more persuasive and show you how to use these tools in the same way that Jesus used them. Sounds like you've taken some of what you, you teach as a professor in the business schools um, and really applied them to life in general. Is that sort of where you're going with this? I think that's a, a fair statement. I'm a management professor. I teach management principles in different contexts, both to business students and, and sometimes to pastors and others. But mm-hmm. you, know, you can apply those management principles to, to life, mm-hmm. to, to time management, for example. And we did so in the, the busyness study. And uh, the leadership principles, you can apply those to to influence and what have you. So, yeah, there there is a a bit of a bridge between what I do on a a regular basis Mm -hmm. uh, at Charleston Southern University and um, what I'm writing about for LifeWay. Well, Michael, I know that you're a busy man, so I appreciate you coming and being with us today. Um, I'm not nearly as busy as I used to be. Well, and it <laughs> sounds like you've taken your own advice, which is what we to. hope with these studies, right? But thank you so much for coming, and as you get some other projects 
um, out there. We, we hope you'll come back and see us at Inside Lifeway. Thank you so much.